Welcome to another session in uh, database management systems. Uh, until now we have seen um, uh, different aspects of uh, DBMS design. Uh, we have seen what a typical life cycle of a database management system looks like. Uh, essentially we saw that a DBMS is uh, something like uh, or could be treated analogous to the engine of, of an information system. And what is an information system? Uh, anything uh, a, a part of a larger system that deals with information flow, management, storage, retrieval, handling and so on. So everything to do with information is usually, uh, uh, is usually driven uh, by, uh, uh, by a database management system at the core. Right? Uh, so what I assume that you should know by, uh, by today's class uh, is that you should be uh, familiar with what, is, uh, what are the roles of uh, uh, different, uh, uh, what are the roles of a typical uh, DBMS system, what are the different kinds of actors that, that uh, exist in a typical DBMS and uh, 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 conceptual modeling uh, using the ER model. Uh, we saw a little bit uh, about uh, uh, ER uh, or entity relationship based uh, design for conceptual modeling and also uh, uh, the, the relational model which is the physical model or, uh, or uh, rather it is not exactly the physical model as, as in terms of the uh, uh, disk storage that that's used, but but the uh, it's, it's still called the physical schema because th that is the way in which uh, the the database schema appears to all the uh, uh, all the programs that uh, uh, that utilize this uh, uh, DBMS system, right? So it uh, so, so the the relational model and uh, uh, different terms as as to uh, what is meant by a table uh, relation, a normalization, functional dependencies, and so on. And, and also a little bit of a, a, a set of rules as to how to convert a given conceptual model in, a, in an ER diagram to a, a given a, a, to its correspondent relational schema. Right? So today uh, what we will do is uh, uh, let us look at a typical case study, okay, a database design case study. Right? So how do we go about designing an application okay, around a DBMS system? Uh, note that we are not here talking about the design of a DBMS itself, but we are de uh, talking about design of an application uh, on, uh, on top of a DBMS. Okay? So uh, when I was talking about UODs in one of my earlier class, this is what we are going to look at. That is we are, we are going to consider a particular universe of discourse and then uh, take it up. Right? So rather than taking toy examples okay, and rather than taking uh, 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 a, an example comprising of just a little bit of uh, 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 database uh, or data management requirements. Uh, I have taken up a fairly comprehensive example. At the same time, uh, one should be aware of the fact that uh, real life databases, for example, uh, the, the moment when we talk about databases, we are, uh, uh, we are uh, uh, first reminded about banks and railway reservations and so on. I have not taken either of them because they are massive database systems. Uh, Indian railways, for example, is huge. Uh, in terms of the amount of transactions that happen and amount of uh, uh, data that, that is generated and stored uh, every day. So uh, it, would, it would be a disservice. In fact, uh, uh, it would be plain wrong to, to take up uh, uh, such a massive database as a case study uh, and in fact we would be simplifying it so much that, uh, uh, th that, that you will not appreciate the, the, the actual complexity that lies in, in managing such a huge system. So what I have done here is to take up an actual system that uh, uh, you might actually want to uh, uh, implement as part of a class project or something which uh, uh, and uh, which are and several of such uh, uh, d d database management systems exist in practice. So, so the case study that we are taking is shown here. Okay? It is a conference management system. Okay? As you know several uh, conferences today are, uh, uh, are managed by a web based uh, uh, interface where uh, uh, 
where, where, where uh, you can manage all the activities and data that, that are related to the conference. Okay. So what is the conference management system contain? So here is a brief description of the UOD, right? the, the, uh, the universe of discourse and uh, the, the different kinds of requirements that, that make up this uh, UOD. Okay. So let me uh, read it out uh, uh, from the uh, requirements itself. Of course, this is a simplified conference management system. Uh, uh, it does not make sense to uh, take up uh, 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 a real life database in its complete uh, gory details, but, uh, but, uh, but at least the, uh, what I hope is that the, the gist of a particular uh, requirements of, of a given UOD should be captured by these requirements. Okay. So let us look at the requirements once again. The technical program of a large conference is uh, decided by a program committee. Okay. So, so there is a committee of people who decide which paper should be published or which paper should be presented and which paper should not be presented for, for uh, in, in a given conference. And the program committee is headed by a PC chair or a program committee chair. Okay. All other members of program committee will act as reviewers. Okay. So, 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 so people would submit papers to the conference and they would be reviewed by different, uh, 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 different members of the program committee. Okay. Now that is about the program committee. So, so let us look at the next uh, set of uh, requirements. What about a paper? Okay. A paper is authored by one or more authors of course and it should have a unique contact author. Okay. So, so there should be one author in the paper who should take responsibility of, of the paper. Uh, so, uh, so it is to this author, uh, it is to him or her that, the, the, uh, that uh, all further correspondence will be addressed to. Right? So, correspondence regarding whether the paper is accepted finally or is it rejected or it should be uh, accepted after another process of review and what kinds of changes to be made in the paper and so on and so forth. Right? So, uh, and look at the other set of requirements. Okay? So, uh, any person who is a member of uh, the program committee cannot be an author of any paper that is published to the conference. Of course, uh, in real life conferences, it is a bit more relaxed than this. That is, you can actually submit papers uh, to a conference even though you are a P uh, program committee member. But for our purposes, let us, uh, uh, let us keep it a kind of uh, uh, stringent. Uh, uh, stringent meaning it is just going to make things simpler. Okay? So as long as you are on the program committee, you, you cannot uh, publish any papers in this conference. Okay? What is the reason for that? Because uh, a program committee member uh, <coughs> should not uh, push his or her own papers into the conference. Right? So, so they should act only as reviewers. And so on, right? Uh, what about authors? An author may submit one or more papers. There is no, uh, 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 there is, there is no uh, <coughs> limitation on that. And uh, uh, but each paper has a unique identity, right? So, uh, so we are selecting papers and not authors. Okay, so so that's an important thing here. And uh, 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 and a paper cannot be submitted to more than one conference or a journal. Okay, so if I submit a paper somewhere, I cannot submit the same paper to somewhere else. Right? And I cannot obviously also, also submit a published paper somewhere else. Right? Now, uh, the, the last set of requirements is, uh, uh, the, the last block of requirements is that a paper is reviewed by at least three reviewers. Okay? So when I send a paper to a conference, it goes to at least three other reviewers and a reviewer will give uh, a suggestion as to whether to accept the or reject the paper. Okay? So, so that is uh, shown here. A reviewer may either accept or reject a paper or be neutral towards a paper. If the reviewer cannot take a decision, uh, the, the reviewer just says that okay, I am neutral to this paper. Okay, so uh, uh, the actual decision should be taken by the other two reviewers. Okay, and in very rare cases, all three reviewers would be neutral, and uh, the, uh, well, the, the the program committee chair or the PC chair should have to take uh, should have, uh, should take a call on such papers. Right. So based on reviewer comments, PC chair prepares a set of papers for acceptance, and then uh, th those sets of papers are accepted into the, into the conference. Okay. Now uh, let me pause for a little while here and uh, 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 go through the requirements once again. Okay. So, so carefully look at the requirements of uh, of your end user. Okay. Uh, th there is a program committee. There is a, pro a PC chair. Ultimately, what is it that we have to do? We have to uh, take care of the conference activities. Okay. Now if you look at uh, any set of requirements carefully, you will see that there are two uh, things that, that a requirement says. Right? Uh, uh, a set of requirements will, uh, will indicate an explicit set of required behavior. Okay? That is, these things have to be there. Okay? The, 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 the paper says that uh, uh, every paper has to be reviewed by three uh, reviewers. Right? And um, every paper has to have a contact author and so on. Okay? There are some things which are explicitly required by your specifications. Right? Similarly, there are some things which are explicitly forbidden by 
uh, the, the specifications. If I have sent a paper to uh, a conference, I cannot or I may not send uh, the same paper to some other conference, right. So, so this is a specific forbidden condition, you should not do, you shall not do this and so on, okay. But, but if you see again carefully, there are a number of requirements or number of things here uh, which one might, uh, uh, one might uh, talk about which uh, are neither required nor forbidden by the requirements, right. Uh, uh, can, you, can you think of some requirements uh, uh, for the conference management system itself that, uh, uh, th that is neither required nor forbidden, okay. Uh, let us take something like uh, how many papers should a reviewer review, okay. Uh, can I say that a reviewer can review 5 papers, 10 papers or exactly 1 paper and so on, okay. There is nothing that is said in the requirements here. If you, if you look at this carefully, uh, the, the requirements says neither yes nor no, okay. Uh, so, uh, th th there is nothing said about, the, about these requirements itself, okay. So, that is uh, an important thing to note in most uh, application design, uh, when, we, when we capture requirements, uh, the requirements tells us something that, that needs to be there and tells us something that should not be there, okay, but is silent on, on a large number of uh, uh, things as well, okay. So, that greatly affects uh, how we design our application and uh, 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 whether our application, uh, suppose you design a DBMS system and uh, you say that because of some constraint somewhere, you say that uh, a reviewer cannot review more than two papers. Is it correct or is it wrong, okay. So, th so there is no specific uh, uh, answer to this because the, the, the requirements neither requires this nor forbids such a uh, thing, right. So, uh, so usually uh, uh, this is how uh, a systems development life cycle, some of the top uh, or, or the early stages of a systems development life cycle would look like, right. So, uh, if you look at this slide here, uh, you have the systems requirement specifications, where uh, there are a set of explicitly required conditions and there are a set of explicitly forbidden conditions and this is the entire UOD, where uh, uh, the number of things which are not addressed by the, the, the requirements, okay. Now, based on this, you get a high level design of your uh, uh, of your uh, uh, system, you know, usually this in the in, in the form of a ER model or whatever when it comes to DBMS uh, design, right. So, you, you end up with a ER diagram here, uh, in turn you reduce the ER diagram to a, a relational schema, okay, or, or a low level design and then you get a system model, okay. Relational schema plus transactions and so on, uh, a small set of application logic and uh, some set of constraints, triggers, uh, uh, stored procedures and so on and then you get a system model, okay. Usually what happens is this process, how do you get design from requirements, okay, or, or how do you uh, move from high level design to low level design, okay. These sets of processes involve human activity or human creativity to, to creativity to, to be more specific, right. So, uh, and uh, uh, as, as is so common with human uh, uh, actions, the system model may not exactly reflect the system's requirements. Okay. Uh, ideally, what should the system model do? The system model should, should exactly reflect the requirement specification here, right. So, uh, as, as shown here, the red spot is slightly bigger here, okay. What does that mean? That, that the system model uh, has more forbidden conditions than what is uh, explicitly forbidden by the requirement specifications itself, right. So, it brings us to uh, some uh, 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 two important concepts when, uh, when we are designing a real life system, the, the concepts are what are called as liveness and safety, right. So, uh, uh, look at the, uh, uh, look at the English uh, definitions of uh, liveness and safety, okay. Liveness means what? That, that something is alive or something uh, 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 is, is existent and so on and safety of course is, is, is obvious, okay. Now, uh, if you look at the system's requirement specifications, why would uh, a set of requirements, so, so let us go back here, why would a set of requirements say that this is forbidden, okay. Why would the, uh, a set of requirements say that uh, a member of the PC committee shall not be an author of a paper? Why, why would a set of requirements say? Because it would compromise <coughs> the integrity of the system if that were to be allowed, okay. Uh, because if I allowed a PC committee member to be an author of a paper, there is quite a likelihood uh, or there is quite a chance that the PC committee member may push his or her own paper. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, and have an unfair advantage over others, right? So it is the safety of the system 
is getting compromised okay so that is why i forbid the behavior uh, for, forbid these activities okay so essentially whatever is forbidden usually constitutes uh, a safety requirement okay in, in order to safeguard the system against uh, integrity violations i say that this shall not be there okay however what is uh, the simplest form to build a safe system how do i build a system that is absolutely safe and uh, from, from any kind of integrity violation simple do not uh, start the system at all. If a system that does not work it is absolutely safe. If your database system does not work at all it is absolutely safe because it does not violate any integrity constraints at all right. So that is why uh, a, a, a trivial way of ensuring safety is to, is to make a system that does not work but that is not what, what we want right. In addition to safety we need uh, we require certain behavior to, to, to happen okay. So those are what are called as liveness requirements that is uh, the system should perform certain activities and should not perform certain activities right. So, uh, 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 so, so let us use some notations when uh, uh, just, just to talk about mismatches. Now suppose I say that R of SRS here okay is the set of required behavior by the SRS or the systems requirement spec okay. Similarly F of SRS is the set of forbidden behavior or, or safety constraints specified by the SRS okay. Similarly let us say R of M okay or uh, uh, where M is the model that, that we build the, the final system model that we build right. So let R of M denote the set of all liveness criteria in the system model okay that is the system model will do this okay and uh, F of M denote the set of safety criteria in the system model that, that is the system model will not do this and so on okay. Now, uh, when we talk about a system model that is when we talk about building a system model from a set of requirement spec uh, we can think of various kinds of mismatches that can occur okay. So the various things can go wrong when, when we are talking about uh, 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 capturing user requirements in, into a system model. What are the things that, that can go wrong uh, a, a tentative list of things I mean these, these are not the only things that can go wrong uh, in fact in addition to this a huge number of things can go wrong but anyway okay. Now let us say what if R of M okay remember what is R of M, R of M is the set of required behavior uh, uh, of the model okay. What if R of M is a proper subset of R of SRS okay what does this mean the set of required behavior by the model is a proper set of the set of required behavior by the SRS okay that means that the model is incomplete the, the, the SRS requires certain behavior to be done but uh, you do not implement all the behavior okay you do not factor all those behaviors you, you factor a subset of those behaviors okay. Now <coughs> what if in addition to this okay R of M being a proper subset of R of SRS in addition to this let us say the, the uh, uh, R of SRS minus R of M okay uh, that is uh, um, uh, the, the, the set of requirements specified by the, the systems requirement spec okay which are not factored into the model is actually a part of f of m okay is actually a part of the set of forbidden uh, uh, behaviors by the model okay what is uh, what does that mean it means that not only the, does the model address all the requirements in, in the uh, uh, in the in the requirement spec in fact there are certain requirements of the requirement spec that the model actually forbids that is that, that the model will not do okay so uh, it means that the model is not only incomplete it is incorrect it forbids certain required behavior right. Similarly uh, what if uh, R of SRS is a uh, is a proper subset of R of M okay that means that the model is uh, is performing more activities than than what is required by the SRS itself right that is the model has extraneous behavior okay and having extraneous behavior is not uh, that is having an added feature for example okay uh, uh, suppose uh, the, the, the model asks for the birth date of the author okay when were you born and so on okay uh, it does not always uh, be a desirable feature it can actually be potentially unsafe okay when is it potentially unsafe when uh, when R of SRS is, is a proper subset of R of M that is uh, the, the, uh, what we saw here and the, the difference between R of M and R of SRS is actually a part of F of SRS that is uh, the, the, uh, uh, the, the extra behavior that uh, uh, the, 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 or the extra so called value addition that your model is doing is actually part of the set of safety conditions that is, is actually forbidden by the by your requirements okay. So, so the model has extraneous and unsafe behaviors right. So when you build a system model uh, you should be uh, uh, careful to uh, or uh, this is one set of guidelines 
by which you can measure whether your system model is uh, uh, is good enough uh, against the requirements. That is, uh, uh, just just try uh, separating the requirements into set of uh, required behavior and a set of forbidden behavior and your model also into set of required behavior and a set of forbidden behavior right. So, let us say some more mismatches here ok. Now, uh, what if f of m is a proper subset of f of s r s ok the, that is the set of all forbidden things of the model ok is a proper subset of the set of all forbidden things of the s r s. That means, that the, the model is unsafe that is the, the requirements require you to forbid certain things which, which you are not forbidding here right. Similarly, uh, what if it is the other way around that is the, the model forbids more than what is required by, by the SRS ok. Then you say that the model is conservative ok. Now, uh, uh, it, uh, conservative again does not mean that you are safe ok. Uh, usually in English we say that oh let us be conservative and go about like this uh, uh, and take this action and so on. But just by saying let us be conservative does not necessarily mean that you are safe ok. Why? Because you could actually be violating a liveness criteria right. So, uh, uh, so this is the case here that is uh, uh, f of s r s is a proper subset of f of m that is the model forbids more than what is uh, required to be forbidden by the s r s and the difference that is what the model forbids ok uh, which is not forbidden by the requirements is actually part of the required behavior of the s r s ok. So, you forbid something which actually needs to be there ok. So, so in being more conservative you are you are actually hampering the liveness of the system right. So, uh, so, so just being conservative does not always mean uh, uh, you are building a safe uh, model right ok. So, so let us see uh, let us take a step by step approach to see uh, to let us try to divide our requirements coming back to the uh, conference example uh, to see what kinds of required behavior are there by, by the model and so, uh, by the requirements spec and so on ok. So, uh, uh, of course, the, 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 the kind of uh, uh, the, the, the kind of uh, example that we are seeing here uh, is a simplified example and, and real life examples are far more uh, 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 difficult than this, but, but anyway this, this, this gives us the gist of uh, uh, how to uh, factor requirements into set of required behavior or liveness behavior or set of safety conditions and so on ok. So, uh, so what could be the step by step approach let us uh, the, the first thing is we have to find the set of required and forbidden conditions ok. Then, uh, then w once you start that then start uh, identifying the various entities their attributes the relationships between entities and so on ok. Then uh, build a complete ER model for the uh, for the problem statement and then convert the ER model into a, a relational model and perform uh, normalizations uh, uh, if, if they are not already normalized right. So, let us look at some of the required conditions ok. A paper is reviewed by at least 3 reviewers ok. That actually means that a paper should be reviewed by at least 3 reviewers right. So, uh, so if I uh, 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 if I uh, try to review or if I try to accept a paper that has been reviewed by only 2 reviewers then uh, your conference uh, 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 management system should flag an error it should not allow it to do that right. So, th this is a required condition that is uh, a paper is reviewed by at least 3 reviewers ok. Each program committee has a pro has a PC chair ok. So, so this is another required condition you cannot have a, a program committee without a chair ok. Each paper has a contact author ok. Uh, if you go back through the requirements that, that we saw. Uh, all these have been picked from the set of requirements itself right. So, uh, each paper has a contact author ok. That means, that each paper should have a contact author and so on ok. A paper is authored by one or more authors ok. So, uh, obviously, this means that you should not accept uh, a paper without any authors in it ok. And uh, a reviewer must comment ok, or must give comments which can be one of the following uh, accepted, rejected or neutral ok. You cannot uh, uh, the reviewer cannot give any other comment other than these three ok. So, uh, and the reviewer should give one uh, one of these three ok. The reviewer cannot remain silent ok saying that I am neither accepted nor rejected nor am I neutral about the paper and so on ok. Uh, uh, and the reviewer should uh, uh, should give only one of these right. So, 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 this is a set of required condition. What are some of the forbidden conditions? Uh, we saw some examples already right. Uh, a paper cannot be submitted to more than one conference or a journal. Right. So, uh, you may not submit a paper to more than one conference and so on ok. Uh, the, an author of a paper may not uh, be a member of a program uh, of the program committee right. So, so that is another forbidden explicitly forbidden conditions ok. So, uh, uh, that, that have been explicitly stated in the requirements that these are forbidden ok. 
and a, a paper uh, may not have more than one contact author okay so so there has to be one and only one contact author so so there it may not have more than one okay so these are some some kinds of required conditions and forbidden conditions and and so on okay so uh, so when you build your system model what you should be able to do is take up each set of required conditions and see whether your model also uh, uh, has that required behavior take each set of forbidden conditions and see that whether your model also forbids those conditions okay and the other way around okay take each set of for, uh, required behaviors by your model and see that whether they are actually required by the set of requirements okay so on okay so so let us now go to the next step and start identifying entities okay so uh, how do we identify entities and what is an entity and an entity is some logical uh, 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 logical item one could say or logical uh, 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 something of uh, uh, which which has an independent existence of its own okay so i I'm, i was about to say logical entity which 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 kinds of becomes a circular definition in this case okay so anyway so let us look at the problem statements once again the technical program of a large conference is decided by a program committee headed by a pc chair if you just look at that uh, statement you can already find several entities here right so the conference is an entity okay of a large conference okay we, uh, conference is something that has a logical existence program committee is a, is an entity here okay uh, uh, essentially the nouns in this in the sentence right and is headed by a pc chair is an, an another entity here right so uh, uh, and one could even say the technical program could also be an entity and so on okay so uh, uh, so, so uh, j just uh, reading through each sentences you can identify uh, uh, what could be potential entities in your system right similarly the next statement all other members or some statement down here all other members of program of the program committee will act as reviewers okay so reviewers is another entity uh, as soon as we found uh, this thing okay so uh, uh, similarly uh, a paper is authored by one or more authors okay so a paper is an entity okay now author now is is uh, uh, now uh, uh, here there's a question okay uh, this, this is not uh, as simple as that okay so is author uh, is it an entity or is it an attribute okay is uh, is an author an attribute of a paper that is a paper as an entity and uh, this paper is authored by so and so authors and so on okay now uh, some cases we can make uh, author as an attribute of a paper but here okay but here we see that author also has an independent existence why because we have something called a contact author okay we have something called author may not be a member of the program committee and so on okay so uh, uh, so the author may actually participate in other relations as well okay and an author may write more than one paper okay if i make author as an attribute of uh, uh, of the paper entity there is no way to relate or there is no relate to equate that uh, paper 1 and paper 2 have been published by the same author and so on okay so so there's no way to equate those two okay so uh, uh, so in our case uh, uh, it is uh, it's better to take author or it's better to design author as an entity itself right similarly again uh, some more a paper cannot be submitted to more than one conference or a journal again there there is an entity called journal and so on okay conference we already saw uh, uh, is 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 an entity right now uh, uh, what about relationships now now that we have identified entities okay uh, of course we are we are no way near to uh, finishing the identification of entities but uh, uh, let us look at relationships i mean uh, you should have got the ideas as to how to go about identifying ent uh, entities and its attributes and so on okay now uh, uh, again take a look at the statement okay now uh, uh, what are the entities uh, uh, the, the, uh, that that you can see in a given statement the entities would generally be the nouns of a particular statement right now what could be the relationship here okay now look at the verb okay uh, something is headed by something else and so on okay so or handled by and so on okay so uh, uh, so, so so the verb statements that that connect two or more nouns would actually uh, be prime candidates for relationships okay so uh, if you look at this uh, uh, statement here the technical program of a large conference is decided by a program committee headed by a pc chair okay so as you can see here this part already forms a relationship right that is uh, or, or rather the, the first part uh, is, is a relationship here that is uh, conference is handled by program committee right that is handled by our technical program decided by if if i have to make it uh, very explicit okay so conference is handled by a program committee okay and as you can see uh, uh, 
uh, the technical program of a large conference is decided by a program committee so so basically it is a uh, one to one relationship right that is uh, one conference one program committee okay but then look at this here uh, program committee we have made program committee into uh, into a weak entity here okay why is it a weak entity first of all what is a weak entity uh, if you notice carefully uh, a weak entity is an entity uh, or if you remember your uh, year uh, uh, modeling uh, classes a weak entity is an entity which does not have an independent existence of its own okay it, its existence is defined by a relationship okay so uh, and uh, and uh, the, the relationship that defines a weak entity is also called a uh, defining relationship right so so th this is a defining relationship okay so uh, 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 shown by uh, double uh, uh, arrows like this and uh, this is what is called as a total participation if you remember your uh, year classes again so a program committee totally participates in this conference right that is the same program committee may not participate in more than one conference entities and this is the defining relationship okay so uh, uh, if there is no program committee then there is no conference right similarly let us look at another statement the technical program committee of uh, a large conference is decided by a program committee headed by the pc chair same statement okay so uh, uh, so again program committee here and pc chair heads program committee right that is uh, a pc chair uh, uh, is, uh, uh, is is an entity which we have found and uh, uh, a pc chair heads a program committee okay now here if you can see that, uh, again uh, uh, we see that this cardinality okay that is uh, uh, the, uh, a, P, a program committee is headed by a PC chair is clear. Okay, that is one program committee should have exactly one PC chair. Okay, but one PC chair can head how many committees? It is neither specified uh, or rather it is neither required nor forbidden. Okay, it is not specified in the requirements. Okay, so so here we have made it into a n cardinality, one to n or whatever. Right, so that is a program a PC chair can head any number of program committees. And so on. Okay, so because uh, there, there is no explicit specification as such uh, in terms of how many uh, program committees can, can a PC chair head, right. Again uh, some more relationships, okay, so, so take a look at this statement, the technical program of a large committee whatever headed by a PC chair and so on, all other members of, uh, pro of the program committee will act as reviewers, okay. So, so let us say uh, we already had, had this, uh, this one, right, that is uh, 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 a program committee is here and that is headed by a PC chair and one PC chair can head uh, one to n program committee, uh, uh, program committees and so on, okay. Now a program committee uh, consists of reviewers, okay, which is apparent by the second sentence, right, that is uh, 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 all other members of program committee will act as reviewers. However, however, it is not exactly, uh, uh, it is not exactly correct, right, it is not exactly what, what is specified by the requirements, right, that is. Uh, what is the requirement say all other members of program of the program committee right so uh, uh, so, so basically uh, what what does this uh, th this means that is uh, all members who are not pc chair that is who is, who are not a, uh, uh, who are not acting as pc chairs can be reviewers of this okay so if i take two separate relationships like this in isolation they do not form a consistent uh, set here because it is violating a forbidden condition. It is violating a condition that the PC chair may not be a reviewer, okay. So how would you uh, rewrite this, uh, uh, this condition here? Uh, so basically we will introduce a new entity called, uh, um, uh, called members, okay, and, uh, uh, and, and basically form uh, what, what might be termed as uh, a, a generalization specialization relationship, right. So remember uh, the extended ER model uh, allows for a specialization relationship where uh, given a member or given an entity you can uh, inherit uh, one or more entities from it, right. That is uh, it actually shows the easier relationship, okay. And in addition to the easier relationship here we, we, uh, uh, we have this circle called D. What is the uh, D specified? D basically specifies that these are disjoint entities that is uh, no entity instance that is part of reviewer can also be uh, a PC chair and uh, vice versa, so, right. So, uh, so our uh, uh, committee would now look like this, a committee would consist of members, okay, where members would in turn consist of uh, a reviewer and PC chair which are disjoint, 
Okay. So, a committee can consist of 1 to n member n number of uh, uh, members, but there has to be exactly one PC chair. Okay. So, so basically in addition to this we have to give a cardinality of 1 here and uh, uh, n here for, for, uh, 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 for n reviewers and uh, one PC chair. Right. <coughs> Again let us look at uh, some more uh, uh, some more statements when uh, to, to identify relationships. Uh, a paper is authored by one or more authors okay, and has a unique contact author. Okay. So, so, again we can see that uh, 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 we can identify relationships straight away here, paper is authored by authors, okay, one or more authors and an author can, uh, uh, can author how many papers, there is no specification. So, so we just introduced 1 is to n. Okay. So, so, we are kind of being a liberal model, okay. we, are, we are not uh, being, being uh, very, very uh, uh, conservative model that is we are we are allowing for more uh, behaviors than than has been required that is an author can submit any number of papers unless it is explicitly forbidden of course okay and a paper should have a contact author okay that is uh, a, a paper here uh, uh, any number of papers sh uh, should have exactly one contact author okay so uh, uh, one author who who acts as the contact author again in isolation these two relationships are not sufficient because uh, why do you think they are not sufficient? Let, let me pause for a little while here. Uh, why do you think uh, going back to these two set of um, uh, entities, why do you think they are not uh, uh, sufficient in, in themselves? I am sure you would have got the answer. The, the thing is while a paper can be authored by one or more authors and a paper can have contact authors, okay, there is no uh, relationship that states that the contact author should be one of the authors here. right? So, uh, uh, one of the authors from here should be taken and be formed as the contact author for, for a given paper that is. Uh, uh, so, so, you have to uh, in the earlier case there was a disjoint relationship a PC chair cannot be or may not be a, a reviewer okay. and here uh, there is a membership requirement that is uh, a contact author ought to be one of the authors uh, of, the, uh, of the paper right. So, uh, how do you go about, uh, 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 let us come back to this uh, again later. So, uh, so again uh, any person who is a member of the program committee cannot be the author of any paper. Okay. So, so we will come back to that uh, earlier uh, thing after uh, taking this other constraint also into perspective and, and then draw the entire uh, uh, set of relationships at one go. Okay. So, uh, uh, what does this say here? Any person, okay, note that now again person is a noun here. Okay. So, so, we need another new entity called person. Okay. So, any person who is a member of the program committee cannot be the author of any paper. Okay. So, one way to show this is uh, have a person called uh, uh, have an entity called person and make a disjoint uh, uh, specialization between member. Remember we, we had a we had an entity called member here okay, members or whatever. Okay. So, we had an entity called member and uh, 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 an entity called author. Okay. So, so, an author may not be a member or a PC committee member and a member may not be an author and both are persons and so on. Okay. So, uh, so, so that way you can identify that uh, 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 any person uh, uh, cannot be both uh, an author and a member of the PC committee or the program committee. Right? And uh, 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 a paper may not be submitted okay. uh, even though sometimes when, when talking in English we, we say uh, a paper cannot be submitted to more than one conference or general. Okay. To, to, to be more precise it actually uh, should be a paper may not be submitted to more than one conference or a journal. Okay. So, again uh, uh, here uh, 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 what, what first of all what can we imply from that a paper can be submitted to a journal and a paper can be submitted to a conference. Okay. So, so these two can, can, be, can be implied, okay. but, but what is it that we actually need? Okay. The, uh, what we actually need is that while a paper can be submitted to a journal as well as submitted to a conference, it may not be submitted to more than one conference or a journal. Okay, the same paper may not be submitted to more than one conference or a journal. Okay. So, uh, so, here in order to identify that we have used uh, 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 we have used uh, uh, the, the union or, or the concept of a union where, uh, uh, where it is uh, one, one might call it the opposite of the specialization condition where uh, you take two or more entities and form a union out of them and, and form a single entity. Right. So, so take a journal or a conference okay, and form a union out of them and make an entity called event okay, and the paper is submitted to an event. Okay. And uh, uh, how do you say that uh, 
uh, it has to be submitted to only one conference or a journal at any point in time. Uh, only thing is uh, make this the cardinality of event as one here, right? So a given paper can be submitted to uh, uh, one paper here uh, 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 or one to n papers. That is, a given event can may have uh, n papers, uh, and a given paper may be submitted to exactly one event. Okay, and what is that event? An event could be a conference or a journal. Okay, calling a journal as an event is is not exactly uh, 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 is not uh, is not exactly uh, correct sounding in terms of uh, the, the, the English uh, definitions, but anyway we have, we have used this term, but uh, uh, you might think of a better term than event uh, to, to, to specify or to take the union of a uh, uh, journal and a conference. Right? Similarly, a paper is reviewed by at least three reviewers okay? and a reviewer may either accept or reject or be neutral towards uh, the paper. Okay? So, uh, uh, so, so what, is this, uh, uh, what does this statement say? A paper is reviewed by uh, reviewers. Okay. So, n number of papers is reviewed by 3 to n okay. that is at least 3 or any uh, anything more than 3. Okay. Now, now take a look at the second uh, half of the statement. A reviewer may either accept, reject or be neutral towards a paper. Okay. That means, the reviewer is going to give a result. Okay. The result is either accept, reject or neutral or be neutral. Okay. Now, uh, uh, if you see carefully the, the, the attribute called result does not belong either to the reviewer nor to the paper okay because a paper uh, the result of a paper is actually uh, a combination of the results of three or more reviewers right uh, and uh, a, a reviewer may be reviewing more than one paper so 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 you can't assign result to uh, a reviewer as well okay so the the attribute called result is actually an attribute of the relationship itself okay so so remember that we had talked about uh, uh, attributes which belong to relationships. Okay, so as long as there is an instance of uh, this relationship existing in the in the system, uh, 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 an instance of this attribute may also exist in the system. As, uh, whenever uh, the relationship instance does not exist, okay, uh, uh, when when can a relationship instance not exist? For example, when uh, when there is a paper which is not assigned to any reviewers, for example. Okay. then there is no uh, instance of the relationship at all that is reviewed by and so on. Okay. So, uh, uh, so, so there is no question of a result uh, existing in this right? or even when a paper is uh, assigned to just two reviewers. Okay. So, uh, as, uh, if you look at the relationship here, the relationship requires that a paper be uh, 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 submitted to at least three reviewers. So, so, so therefore, there is no instance of such a relationship existing and therefore, there is no uh, instance of the result uh, in, in the uh, database as such. Okay. Similarly, uh, uh, coming back to attributes, now, now, le, now le, uh, let us say conference. Okay. Now, the requirements does not say anything as such, okay. but uh, uh, as application designers, it is our responsibility to, to identify some, um, uh, some, uh, some, some of the major attributes of, of a particular entity and also identify key attributes. Okay. So, here in this case, a conference uh, uh, conference name and, and the date and the place, topic and all of those things would be attributes of the conference and usually uh, something like the conference name would be the primary key or uh, would be the key of key attribute of the conference. Okay. And similarly, uh, program committee does not have any primary key because it is a weak entity type we, uh, which, uh, 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 which we actually uh, uh, saw earlier, right? So a program committee does not have a key attribute, but it may have other attributes like uh, what is the strength of the program committee, how many people are there uh, in the program committee uh, as of now, and so on, right? So a program committee has a, uh, 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 is, a is a weak entity type having no uh, key attribute, but it it has its own uh, other attributes. Okay, and uh, uh, have a look at the uh, entity called person. Okay. For person again you can uh, think of lot of different uh, attributes, what is the name of the person. Okay. Now when you say name, uh, usually in several cultures you, you, uh, you actually divide a name into first name, last name, middle name uh, uh, and, so, and so on, okay. the initials and title and so on and so forth. Right. So, so name could actually be a composite attribute here, okay, which in turn has multiple other attributes, uh, many other attributes say first name, middle name, last name, title, initials and so on and so forth. Then there could be age or date of birth, address and usually you need to have a unique identity to a unique way of identifying a person. Uh, uh, well, uh, 
this, this, was, uh, this was actually created by some of my students where, who, who said pan number as, uh, uh, as the, uh, um, uh, as the a uh, key attribute for a person but usually in a, uh, it is quite unlikely that in a in a conference setting you would ask for a person's pan number uh, usually it would be the email address of of this person which uh, uh, or the contact email address of of this person uh, which would be the key attribute similarly they could have something like phone numbers and uh, phone number here is uh, is treated as a multi valued attribute which means that uh, uh, this attribute can have multiple values so what what does it mean that uh, a, a, a person can have multiple phone numbers okay and uh, I hope you know the difference between uh, uh, a multi-valued attribute and a composite attribute, right? A composite attribute is also made of multiple attributes, but uh, each of these different attributes may belong to different domains, right? So name can be, uh, can have first name, middle name, last name, where a middle name can be uh, can be constrained to be a single letter uh, if if the middle name is an initial, right? Whereas first name and last name can be var cars or uh, uh, or uh, uh, strings and so on. Okay, but uh, when I say phone number. Uh, when there are multiple uh, 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 values for that phone number, all of these values belong to the same domain or are of the same type, right? So, so that is the difference between a multi-valued attribute and a composite attribute, right? So, similarly, other uh, thing uh, when when I say that uh, when I say author, you can give an author ID for uh, 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 for each author, uh, a login ID or whatever, and uh, 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 every other uh, uh, attributes. Uh, uh, of, of a person would be inherited by author, okay? Because author is a person, and uh, so so an author is supposed to have a pan number and a date of birth and phone number and, and so on and so forth, right? Similarly, for paper, uh, it's already specified there that each paper would have a uh, unique uh, identification or a unique key, right? So so for paper, paper ID would be the key, and uh, uh, several other things. What is the title? What is the uh, category, the, the the classification of those attributes, the the, the paper content itself, the, uh, the the keywords that that, uh, that that are given for the paper and so on, all of them could be attributes of a paper, right? And when I say PC member, uh, you can again give member ID for for each uh, 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 for each members so again some kind of a login ID or something which uh, 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 which which would form the primary key for uh, each member, right? And uh, uh, again, uh, several other uh, this thing uh, reviewers and PC chairs. So, so, so a reviewer would have something called uh, a subject of expertise, and uh, PC chair would would have something called conference headed, and so on, which which can be uh, attributes of those uh, respective entities, right? And uh, uh, journal again. So, so journal ID, year of publication, topic, where where I can always have a journal ID as uh, as the uh, as as a primary key. So, finally, we we come to uh, an overall uh, 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 schema for for the entire uh, system, where we, where we put all of these together to to, to form one big uh, uh, ER schema. Okay, so let us spend uh, spend uh, uh, a little bit time uh, in terms uh, by reviewing the schema. Okay, so so what all did we go about uh, uh, looking at? Okay, we we started out by saying where is the conference? Yeah, conference is here. So conference is handled by a program committee, right? And uh, program committee is a weak entity type. So it has no existence without a conference, okay? And uh, pro program committee consists of different members, okay? So uh, among the members, there are reviewers and a PC chair, okay? And there's one PC chair. There, there's exactly one here, right? So and this is a disjoint um, uh, relationship. That is, a PC chair may not be a reviewer, and uh, uh, a reviewer may not be a PC chair. And a PC chair heads program committee. Uh, so so a PC chair may head one or more program committees, like right? Right? So, uh, and similarly, uh, uh, you have a conference and a journal forming an event, right? That is, uh, 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 a given conference or a journal may, may be form, uh, forming an event to which a paper is submitted, right? So, a paper may be submitted to zero or one event, okay? So, so you may not submit a paper at all or you may submit it to at most one event, okay? And uh, an event may, uh, should have at least one paper or it may have any number of papers and so on, okay? And uh, a reviewer reviews a paper or paper is reviewed by reviewers okay and there's a constraint here that is a paper is reviewed by at least 3 reviewers okay now the reviewer uh, the review of a paper okay the process of review of a paper will uh, will result in a result being assigned okay or uh, will create a new attribute called result which the reviewer assigns for this paper okay so so this result is actually a 
uh, attribute of the relationship itself. Okay. Now again, a paper is authored by an author, okay, and there's a contact author. Okay, so so there's exactly one contact author, and it is authored by one or more authors. Okay, so uh, 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 and, and so on, and uh, and both author and members, okay, are persons. Okay, uh, why, why do we need this persons? Because we are we are having uh, attributes of a person separately. That is, a person should have a PAN number and uh, 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 address and telephone number, email and so on. Okay. So, all of those attributes of a person are inherited by both members and authors. Okay. Similarly, all of the attributes of uh, are a combination of the attributes of conference and journals uh, is, is inherited by uh, uh, comes to event and uh, all attributes of members are inherited by reviewers and PC chairs. Right. So, so uh, uh, a member should have certain privileges or benefits or whatever all of those are uh, inherited by uh, both reviewers and the PC chair. Okay. And because a uh, PC chair is a separate member, a PC chair may also have some attributes which are not uh, shared by reviewer uh, uh, or which, do, uh, which, which may not exist for a particular reviewer and so on. Right. So, so, uh, so what we saw today is uh, we have taken a fairly uh, complicated example. I mean it is not a uh, and this is a realistic example, a conference management system. In fact, uh, uh, you can search the internet for something called Confman, okay, which which is a freely available, uh, 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 I guess, uh, open source uh, conference management system, uh, which uses a backend uh, database uh, management system in order to manage uh, activities like this. Or uh, you you might go into uh, 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 MSR CMT, which is the Microsoft Research uh, 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 Conference Management Tool. Uh, which is you actually used by major conferences around the world and uh, 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 which also has something like this. That is there are reviewers, there are authors, there are papers, there are uh, PC chairs, there are uh, uh, committees and so on and so forth. And, uh, and they are a uh, little bit uh, uh, rather significantly more complicated than this, but uh, the, the level of complication to which uh, or, the, or the level of detail to which we have seen uh, uh, in this uh, is fairly representative enough because we have, we have seen some of the major kinds of uh, 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 conceptual requirements that arrive. For example, uh, uh, a PC chair is a member of the program committee, but may not be a reviewer, uh, 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 but may not be any, any other reviewer. right? And a contact author should be part of the author list and, and so on and so forth. Right? So, so, all of these form tricky uh, details, which, uh, uh, which manifest themselves during, uh, uh, during your conceptual design. Right? So, uh, what we will do in the next class is to take this idea forward and take up uh, individual uh, chunks or pieces of uh, uh, this ER diagram and try to convert them to uh, 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 the lower uh, relational schema and see what kinds of uh, tricky situations arise when, when we convert them to a relational schema. Right? So, uh, so let us finish this class uh, here and uh, see you all in the next uh, class. So, so this brings us to the end of this session.